That's a good overview and good background. Uh, I guess in July of 2013, about 18 months ago now, I, uh, I guess was first contacted by uh, Judge Ted Collins in Franklin County, and he he just passed a resolution on July 25th dealing with and asking really hard questions about the proposed bluegrass pipeline. That was the only one that was really on the radar at that time. Although shortly thereafter and almost in tandem with um, the Kinder Morgan, I guess pipeline was also uh, very much in discussion, particularly between the, the partners that were beginning to come together on putting this uh, I guess it's got a long name, the Utica Marcellus Texas Pipeline LLC. Um, that company was, was probably even ahead. Now I, I get to looking at their progress and where they're currently, how their status exists right now. They probably were, were, were very much in the works even before Boardwalk got together, although they were under the radar probably. Uh, there's been a lot of talk about the fracking process and you know what's going on nationally and the, the United States now for the first time has uh, almost achieved energy independence and that's been a result of a lot of different variables. Um, you know higher fuel standards set on automobile manufacturers and hybrid cars and uh, a lot less fuel actually probably being needed and that's uh, it's a good thing because what, whatever source we use we're going to hopefully make it last longer. You know, my biggest criticism all along is why this country has never really ever put together a comprehensive energy plan looking at all the assets that we possibly may eventually have to use to sustain our quality of life not just in the 21st century but the next 100 to 200 years and, and look at our potential demands and using solar and the renewables and all the possibilities that can be brought into play and how we can minimize our dependence on fossil fuels or at least make them uh, bearable and usable in a very, very restrictive kind of manner if they're the most polluting. But, you know, we, we haven't put this large, what I'd call much needed comprehensive plan together for the benefit of this country. We don't have and probably don't need and won't get uh, I guess nationalized energy like they have in some countries. You, you know what goes on in Russia and how they restrict the, uh, some other access to some other parts of their world over there and use it as a weapon and literally starve them and freeze them out. You know, and that's not a good situation either. But, you know, the Utica Marcellus uh, pipeline, um, I was reading just a little bit here about, you know, they sent this packet out October 22nd, 2013, a little over a year ago. Then a year later here, Stantec TRC, a, a company that's been retained as consultants for Kinder Morgan, followed up and sent another packet out here a year later. And then there's another group, Steel Land Services, that's uh, representing Kinder Morgan, Utica Marcellus, Texas, uh, Tennessee Gas Pipeline, Brownfield. It's got another little attachment on it. I don't know exactly what that one comes from. but. They're, they're implying that they're going to need to cross about a dozen roads in Marion County. They already crossed them, they're already under them, but they you know, imply that they may need to get permits to do specific kinds of work and want to know what the requirements are. The questions were, will a permit be required? What type of permit, a utility, a right-of-way permit, the type of permit application that we might have in the county, type of uh, submittals that can be done on, uh, in person, is it by email or fax or is there a meeting required, public hearing, and uh, what would you have to have a public hearing for unless it's going to be something invasive and you know, require uh, some sort of public notice? So, I mean, there's all kinds of implied or inferred impact, that, but you know, really don't know. I guess they're kind of laying the groundwork for whatever they may need to have to do. And um, it, it's still yet to be seen, although their, their, their schedule claims that they're going to be, I think, uh, second quarter. 2017 plan full in service date. You know, that's, that's fairly rapidly. That's the next two years is what they've got in the bottom of their, their letter here. Their plan full in service date is second quarter 2017 if they're, late, if they're on schedule. So it's going to happen uh, relatively quickly. Um, this thousand and uh, 
22 miles. Uh, Marion County has about 20 miles of that and it's existing 20 and 24 inch line between Pennsylvania and Louisiana. Uh, we passed a resolution really kind of using some of the language that I was uh, tutored by Tom Fitzgerald a little bit uh, questioning their uh, their process and, and all the uh, lack of environmental impact you know, a whole lot of Corps of Engineers permitting questions and things that uh, it wasn't exactly like the resolution that was passed by Ted Collins in the Franklin County, but you know, we went on record in the Sisters Loretta and the Trappist Monks and everybody back in July and August of 2013 were, were really questioning the Bluegrass Boardwalk folks, and rightfully so. And uh, we, we listened to our, our people, our constituents, and when they came and asked us to uh, you know, demand and, and go on record at, at this point opposing the bluegrass pipeline. We really didn't think we had any uh, reason why we shouldn't be doing it, obviously. I mean, energy is a big thing, and, and these are big folks. You know, uh, they kind of blow their own horn and tout their bigness. I was reading one of their uh, little fact sheets here, and it's, it's a little kind of scary. Kenner Morgan is the largest midstream and largest energy company based at enterprise value in North America with more than 80,000 miles of pipeline and 180 terminals. And they have five terminals in Kentucky, but they're not transporting any natural gas liquids. They're doing coal and uh, lemonite ore and uh, steel, scrap, pig iron, stainless slabs, wood chips, paper products, fairly benign and byproducts of a lot of manufacturing. But those terminals, you know, they're, they're already doing some parallel things, like they're, they're looking for Corps of Engineers barge permits to put large tows together potentially uh, as a plan B or plan C to float it down maybe the Ohio, Mississippi and, and get it to Louisiana that route. So there, there's other things in motion here besides Kenner Morgan Tennessee Gas Pipeline but you know all these things are in an effort to relieve the fracking congestion if you would you know, because all these liquids have been generated and they really, to continue the process, have to dispose of them. And that's just the uh, way the process works. You have to have to get relief. And I've even heard of injecting some of this liquid deep into groundwater aquifers. Now, that's not scary. Yeah, you know, because I notice out west they're having to go deeper and deeper in well and aquifer drilling to even supply uh, irrigation water for our food, you know, so it's, it's you, you don't want to put that stuff down there and uh, have to try to pump it out later and use it for something that's not going to be available. So, I mean, there's, there's a whole lot of discussion, sideline issues here that are going on in various parts of the country that we all kind of need to be aware of, and I think that, I guess, um, you know, we've had uh, some discussions and I guess there's there's some real, well, I think, uh, I brought a copy of some pictures here from a, uh, we, I'd hope to have him come and be on the panel too. Joe Danny Rayleigh had a gas line explosion about 40 years ago on his farm. And in the background you see this old house that he still lives in. Uh, it's a real old colonial brick home. And within a, looks like a, about 100 yards of his house. In the background here you can see where the explosion ripped open the, the pipeline and the, he uh, literally was scared. I was with thought it, you know the world was coming to an end because it sounded like a train coming through the side of his house. But uh, and this was just natural gas. But uh, natural gas liquids is a far different substance. You know, I think some of the questions you have to ask are: uh, you know, these aren't compressor stations; these are pumping stations, and they're because of noise issues. Um, there's not really these uh, pipelines that were. Uh, the lease, Joe Denny brought over a copy of the lease that his uh, father had signed, I guess, in 1941. Joe Denny's a little bit older than me, but he was, he was still pretty much a kid when in this, this lease was signed in 1941. <coughs> and the language in here is, it's all, if you all have ever seen any of these leases, uh, it's uh, pretty much free reign for the pipeline company. Um, I'll read you just one little section here of it. <coughs> Granted, a right-of-way easement 
that's 30 feet wide in width for the purpose of laying, constructing, maintaining, operating, altering, repairing, removing, changing the size of, and replacing the pipelines with necessary fittings and appliances, including housing for the transportation and regulation of oil, crude petroleum, and refined petroleum products, or combinations thereof, or similar thereto, natural and artificial gases, casing head and natural gasoline, and any other liquids and any other liquids or gases, and of erecting, maintaining, and removing a line of poles and appurtenances. I guess we're talking about some uh, poles that may have been in a way that they needed to, to remove to get the gas line, or at that time, a strictly gas line. Um, this or any other liquids or gases pretty much opens the door for whatever they want to do now. So there's, there's pretty much an open open door for this. Uh, the, the only other thing that was in here that I thought was really, really pretty neat, um, the name of this company, get this, was the Hope Natural Gas Company. <laughs> Hope, H-O-P-E. So it's, uh, it's kind, of, kind of satirical. Um, when was it? Um, there, there's no maturity date. No, you know, there's nothing mentioned. Uh, I was looking for that, but it looks like it's one of these things that just is in perpetuity. Now they were going to guarantee them a, a dollar a linear rod for a gas line constructed on their property. A dollar a linear rod, 16 and a half feet. So this was done the 25th day of July, 1941. So before World War II was even underway. Um, you know, that 1941 is, I think, a critical date because here we are in 2014. <laughs> You know, is there a timeline? Is there ever a longevity? Is there an expiration date? Some of these things we talked about back there. You know, the, the, there should be, you know, when you create something, have some expected useful life, not, not in per perpetuity like the lease might say. But it does give them the right to go back in there and dig it up and replace it. So I guess that's kind of covered too by this lease. So. You know, it, it, it's scary what what potentials exist. And in Tom Fitzgerald's uh, presentation up at the Locust Trace uh, day that we had in Lexington here a month or so ago, uh, some of the things that local communities and local folks can can ask for and demand, and maybe even get some support from people within other legislative bodies. Uh, Zoning requirements, you know, we don't have planning and zoning in Marion County, no county-wide land use planning and zoning at all. So we're kind of very limited, although you can enact ordinances. You know, there are some things that you can do uh, that were mentioned. Uh, Tom mentioned particularly that, uh, you know, there should be some range of some self-determination. Uh, the state does have jurisdiction over on gathering lines for local production, and this is not local production, though. this is just interstate commerce, really. Um, this whole abandonment process, which is, you know, this is a unique situation. This, this was acquired for a specific time and a particular product, an eminent domain, because it was, in its pathway, going to be made available for local at Hope Pipeline. We all hoped for some heat off this thing at that time, but you don't hope for a natural gas liquids leak for sure. There's totally a different uh, outcome. I guess uh, the, the, the boards of zoning adjustment in a county, you know, if a county wanted to grant and open up the door for, we, we give three mile jurisdiction to the local boards for subdivision restrictions about all the planning and zoning we have in Marion County, and that works very well. But if, if it has to come underneath local boards of zoning adjustment for some of the uh, meeting some of the local requirements, then I think the county probably would have to advocate that we probably expand our 
zoning restriction sign. Um, it mentioned something about a floating zone and that might restrict some setback. You know, if they do get into construction mode, um, if there's not access to eminent domain, you know, that, that's going to be, I think, the next biggest question that has to be answered. They did answer that with the bluegrass pipeline. I think that the legislation that Jimmy Higdon actually introduced kind of brought that to light and the Attorney General and everybody else has kind of weighed in on that. That for this product, you know, this is not the Natural Gas Act of 1948 qualifying material. So it's, it's a different, uh, different era, different product, new rules need to apply. <coughs> so I think, you know, that's kind of what we kind of have to keep in mind. And, and, and we, we do need to reach out and engage our legislators in this conversation because us little people down here, we're, we're, we're small, but we, we do all have a voice and we do all vote. But I think we have to use our voice and our united effort to try to you know, bind together as much as we can to get all the potential answers and the security that we can attain you know, and slow the process down enough to where if it is deemed to happen over time because of some large comprehensive energy uh, plan that might probably won't be developed in our lifetime. They haven't done it yet. But you know, I'm not saying that natural gas liquids aren't going to have to be disposed of somewhere by some method, but they don't need to run rough shot over us to do it. So I'll just kind of end you. there. Thank you, Judge. Okay, thank you. Mm.